If you ever meet a old age person and if you ask what is one thing you wish you didn't had they will say diseases I'm sure most of you have of course witnessed this that even though we get old that's all right okay let's get old and die doesn't matter but suffering from diseases is one of the biggest challenge mankind has so what if i tell you that today's video is about disease biology but about how can we revolutionize disease biology using new age artificial intelligence tools now that's where the real biotechnologist stands up and says yes let's do it isn't it so we all know disease biology it's a vast 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 uh, field and any and every pharma company will hire you if you watch this video till the end because this video is going to be a eye opener for you i'm going to tell you four important tools and how they are revolutionizing disease biology and how you can learn these kind of tools okay so let's start by talking about diseases okay where does it happen according to you tell me no tell me in the comment section where exactly the diseases happens does it happen in a particular organ or a particular uh, part of the body the truth is it happens in the smallest the structure the most small the smallest structural and functional unit of life and that's what we call it as cell right any and every disease happens inside our cells right so what if we could analyze cell behavior what if we could analyze how cells are talking how cells are responding how cells are uh, responding to diseases and how cells are responding to medicines if we can analyze all of this using ai tools then actually we can accelerate recovery and we can do much more okay so today we will be talking about four tools the first tool name is m phoenix the second is topovilo the third is moscot and the fourth is siprint now all these tools are actually ai tools in disease biology which can revolutionize which is already revolutionizing the world of disease biology so let's jump into the first approach to solving this problem which is disease biology so like i said diseases change how the cells look like right now if i'm not in good mood like so my face will be like full anger or upset right what if uh, i am uh, not in good mood so i might behave in a different way right the same way the cells also behave in a different way they look different if there is disease right so now the question is can we reverse those changes using the right molecule right which is the drug molecule okay so this is the cell i send this drug molecule it binds and now we'll watch it does it change its behavior does it look better right and all of this is happening in real time so how this works we will use microscopic images right you know this that computer vision is a real thing now so you must have seen that using chat gpt if you show a particular screenshot it will tell you it is from which particular movie right so the same way if you if you show the ai the microscopic images of the cell okay before we have administered that drug molecule and after we have administered that drug molecule it will compare them okay it will watch both sides and say okay this one was when the disease was there this one when i gave this molecule this looks better so that means this drug molecule will work right it's like a facial recognition remember when you go to the airport it recognizes your face and allows you inside right that's how it works so that is a dual ai system now what is a dual ai system here now basically we are talking about a new um, drug hunting tool which is called as m phoenix now it is a dual ai system where we are going to use one ai to look at the images okay the cellular images and the another ai is looking at the molecules shape and dosage okay now why we are looking not just at the shape and also at the dosage is because at lower concentration it won't show effect at a very high concentration it will kill the cell right so we need to watch the dosage also right so now our goal is to find which molecule at what concentration can fix a diseased cell so we are trying to 
fix the disease at the cellular level, right? Imagine all of this research. It feels like a Sherlock Holmes movie, but now you are capable of doing it. Now, even if there is any change, like a lower concentration, we saw the change, we increase the concentration, we see the change, we see, we increase more concentration, the cell dies. Okay, now we know. Okay, this is the right concentration. That's what M. Phoenix does. And this is what excited me to make this video. And this is not just one tool. There are three more tools I'm, which I'm going to talk about. Now, let's talk about the challenges which to, this tool has. And that is where you come into picture, my dear friend. Because if there are challenges to these tools, you can solve those using your AI ML and uh, drug discovery or AI ML exper uh, expertise, right? So the challenges which this tool has is all the cells have some kind of behavior, right? Like we all have some kind of behavior, right? So some cells, some molecules um, do nothing, okay? So they just create noise in the data. So we administered a uh, drug and it does nothing, right? So it's too much of unnecessary uh, noise in the data. The second is we have different doses, right? So we don't know which, at what dose which, which particular cell will work, right? So that's one challenge. Now that is where we will have to innovate and that is where this uh, tool right now has a limitation, but in future, they, they are going to overcome this limitation and that is where you come into picture. Now let's talk about a second tool, which is called as Topovilo. Now, what it does is it tracks the cell changes in space. Now, you you must be knowing that most of the cells move, okay? So, they move from one place to another place, like the blood cells. They move from one place to another place, right? So, cells don't just stay put. They move, they change their shape, they respond to neighbors. Like, we respond to neighbors, right? Somebody threw garbage in my in front of my house, I'll respond to that, right? The same way. So, the cells behave to the neighbors, right? So, neighboring cells. So, now we will be looking at the RNA velocity. Velocity. Now, what is RNA velocity? We are going to track whether a gene is turning on or off by looking at the RNA. So, when we look at the RNA, we know, okay, if this gene is turned off, then only this RNA won't be there. If this gene is turned on, this RNA will come in, right? So, it helps us predict the cell movement. It helps us tell which where the cell is moving next, okay, in its journey, right? So, we know if the cell is going to die or whether the cell is going to be here. So, all of that by measuring the RNA in the cell. So, top of Volo's uh, breakthrough here is this model uh, can analyze entire tissues and not just single cells. They use graphic AI, okay, graph AI, like just like social networks, to study how neighboring cells are getting influenced by this particular cell. So, we are analyzing the entire tissue and we are analyzing how a particular cell is impacting other cells in the neighbor neighborhood. And this is like a peer pressure. Like, you know, how our parents behave, we behave. Our parents scold us, we, uh, we behave in the same way. Or our siblings fought with us, we behave the same way, right? So that's how the cells also respond. So this is an important uh, piece of the puzzle of disease biology where we can analyze the cell behavior. Now, what it can do? It can predict where and how the cells will move, for example, in brain development. And we can also track the neuron migration. It will reveal uh, which cells are most influential in tissue development. I feel this is like rocket science, okay? And you can do this. Th these all tools are now becoming free or available for to general public. And there are various companies coming up with such tools. You can just Google about DeNovo, you will know it. So now we'll come to the third tool. I'm sure you are already excited with these two uh, tools. The third tool is called as Moscot, okay? M-O-S-C-O-T. Now what Moscot does is it rewinds and rebuilds the cell history. It's like, you know, uh, for example, in, the, in your browser, you can go back and come forward, right? The same way, the concept is optimal transport, right? So we are matching how the cells population were there before and after the treatment has been done. So we gave the treatment and whether the population reduced or increased, it's like figuring out the cheapest way to move a pile of sand from one shape to another, right? Now, the challenge here is there are too many cells. So, of course, we need too much of computation and that is where the older methods were slow and this is really fast, right? It could, uh, earlier could handle only, um, uh, you know, few type of data, but Moscot's trick is different. What it is doing is, it is using smarter math, okay? So, it is using low rank approximation and it is processing more than 300,000 cells in just 15 minutes. So, it can process that, it can find out what exactly is going on in this particular cell. It will help us track how the cell developed. So, entire cell history we will know. Uh, just for example, pancreas or... Um, 
any other um, cell, right? Uh, and it will help us reconstruct the cell positions in tissues. It's like, you know, uh, you must have, uh, you must be remembering that, uh, uh, you know, rhyme, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall and fell down and broke his crown and then we, uh, you know, uh, brought his head back right Humpty Dumpty had a great fall all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again so basically what we did we restructured it we realigned it right so it helps us align multiple tissue slices even if they are distorted okay and it combines the space time to space and time to predict how the embryo will grow now the best part is it has got flexible cost functions and that makes it adaptable to different biological questions. So it can be used for multiple biological questions. It is just like a browser. You can go forward, you can go back and see how the cell will move according to this AI, right? So that's where the third tool comes into picture. But the fourth one is really interesting. It's called CPrint. Now it is like grammar. Okay. So what happens in a, a, a sentence, right? If we frame the sentence in the right way, grammatically correct way, we don't feel it weird, but if it is like grammatically wrong, we feel it weird, right? The same way, if this is the AI, CPrint is an AI which understands gene grammar. Now, what exactly it is? AI can now learn how genes talk to each other. It's like a language, okay? So, the foundation model is just like ChatGPT, okay? But it is trained on 50 million cells, okay? So, what it does is it learns the pattern. It learns the rules and it learns the interaction of thousands of genes, how these genes are interacting to each other. Okay. Now it learns the cell types, it learns the tissue types, it learns the disease which is happening to that particular cell, and it will see how a gene is regulating others. Okay. How a gene is responding to diseases, right? So it's like finding grammar of life, and that's what CPrint does. Now, some smart features of CPrint is it can sample rare cell types. Okay. It uses protein sequence and gene locations and it has special loss function ZINB to handle noisy gene data. You know, the gene data is too much, so it can filter out the unnecessary data, right? And that is where it can have zero shot prediction. That means it performs new tasks for which it was never trained on, okay? And it fixes the errors in gene data. That's called denoising and it detects important regulatory genes, right? So. It basically is like ChatGPT. The more the pattern, more smart it becomes and more it improves on its performance. So now I think I've told you four tools. Let me know which one excites you and I'll make mo more videos on that. And I'll try to bring an expert who has worked on these tools to train you, help you understand how exactly these uh, tools work. Okay. So now we know one thing that AI is now doing what used to take years in the lab. Okay. Um, what uh, was, what used to take um, like n number of hard work and hours can be done in minutes, right? So the future of biology is already written and that's where computers merge with com the life itself, the biology itself. So uh, it's no longer that you have to use the regular manual method. You can utilize computational biology codes and you can imagine now a future where you can design a cure right inside your computer. You can predict cell behavior according to that drug, exactly according to your, you know, um, requirement. And then you can rewrite the very code of biology, right? So let me know in the comment section, how does it sound? And if you want uh, more on this, what you can do is you can enroll into the AI MLN Drug Discovery um, Internship, which has started from 31st of July. Okay. The details are given in the description. You can even chat with our experts and including me also in the WhatsApp link, which is given there. And you can... Uh, now learn all these tools, you can implement these tools and you can really, you know, now put it, put on your collars and say that, hey, I'm an expert and I can do things which a normal molecular biologist cannot do, right? The world is going to respect those who are ready for the change. My question is, are you ready for the change? So with these thoughts, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining, keep rocking and keep learning, guys. That's the essence of life. All the best.